Well, as I walk around these old racetracks, I can almost smell the fresh coat of paint on the grandstands. I can almost picture the track promoter hoisting a brand new flag up the pole every event, and I can picture the track crews replacing every piece of Armco every time it got a little prang in it. Well, the 60s, the mid-60s was a good time to be a drag racer. It was a great time to be a drag racing fan. You had Ford, Chrysler, and the General all going toe-to-toe -to -toe for drag racing supremacy. As soon as one, McChevy brought out the Z11, the aluminum fendered car, the Dodge boys would bring out aluminum door and fendered cars. The Ford guys would be stuffing a 427 side oiler into a fair lane, making 100 thunderbolts, and the AFX class, the top dog in NHRA, was getting out of hand. When they said we could have an altered wheelbase, the first year they were three and four inches. Well, by 1965, they were doing it 10 and 15 inches, and the boys at NHRA said, you know what, this is going crazy. You got hillborn injectors, you got them putting nitro down the throats of these things, you got wheelbases that are out of control, and they said no more and that's how match racing started and it was these funny looking cars that actually created the funny car era. Well it wouldn't have been uncommon in 1965 for Hayden Prophet's sock powered Comet to stand off against Bill Flynn's Yankee Peddler, the Hemi powered car. Now with the Hillborn injection we're going to have to prime this thing first. And Todd said we can take this thing for a run. Todd said I can do one easy pass in this car because literally the tires are from 1965 and I really don't care how fast I go, I just want to do one pass in the Yankee Peddler down the quarter mile. Well, I can't believe I just got to drive Bill Flynn's Yankee Peddler. Well, here's the thing is, I'm not that big into drag racing, but I am into history, and this car has got more history than virtually any other super stock and NAFX car out there. These cars weren't just factory lightweight cars, they were a piece of racing history in the beginning of the whole funny car era. And when you ordered one of these cars, there were 11 hardtops that were actually built in the one sedan. The 11 hardtops actually were lightweight, they were acid dip, but the problem was when they started launching hard, the floor started buckling up. Well, Bill, Bill Flynn noticed this when they were at the drag strip, and he said, you know what? I don't want one of those hard tops and don't ask to dip my car. He actually said, I've got this sedan that I'm running in Superstock. Why don't you take it back to the factory, have your guys turn that into my AFX car, alter the wheelbase, do whatever you want, give that car back to me, and that's what I'm going to run. And that's exactly how the Yankee Peddler came to be. Well, that's pretty much the history on the car. Now, what about the restoration? It was done in 1992. They found the original car in rough shape, but all there. All the original fiberglass fenders, the original hood, the original doors, the Lexan windows. You remember these cars had altered wheelbases, so you can see where the factory originally took the front shock towers, moved them ahead, 10 inches. They took the rear axle, moved it ahead 15 inches. You can see in the trunk where they spliced in that extra section. All that's there. All the rough welding or cutting in the back, it's all there. The original tack is still there. All the original equipment is there. The Hillborn injection, in great condition. The fuel tank in the front, even though it was added later, in great condition. How about the stainless steel cross member? Can you imagine trying to find a K member in stainless steel? Impossible to get. How about a set of original 65 M&H slicks, date coated? Of course, the original wheels. The restoration is perfect, done the way the car raced last in 1965. A car like this, the pedigree, the history, the fact that it's the only sedan ever built, the fact that obviously it's the Yankee Peddler, it's got to be worth over a million dollars.